Hello there, my name's Zoe Murphy. I'm a furniture and textile designer from Margate. And today I thought I'd jump on and give you guys a tutorial for how to make a fabric banner using things that you've got around the house. So here are most of the things you're gonna to need to use to make your banner. Nearly all of them can be found around the house and if you can't get them from home, the supermarket is most likely to have them. We've got some paint to print your banner in. Any kind of poster paint will do. Um, and I've got black, but you can use any color that you like. A nice sponge to sponge all of that paint on with. We've got a pillowcase. Just check no one needs it before you use it. And it's a really good idea to use one that's like 100% cotton and feels all lovely and natural. But really have a go with anything. Some salt, some potatoes for printing. We've got some turmeric, which is the thing that's gonna give that lovely colour to the fabric. Got some vinegar, this is the white vinegar. Scissors, a knife, that's for cutting the potatoes, be a bit careful with that. A pen, some paper, a nice big pot to dye everything in. And then finally, some rope and a bit of string to tie that rope on to a stick that we're gonna find in the garden. So to start me off with my natural dye bath, I've got my big pot and in it I've put about four or five big, big cups of water. You can use as much or as little water as you like, you just need to make sure it covers your fabric when it's on the hob cooking away. And next I'm going to add some turmeric. Now again, with all of these ingredients, the internet says so many different measures and balances for your dyes. Really, I think it's just about experimenting and having a go. For my dye bath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put maybe half a dessert spoon of turmeric in for every one cup I've done. Now given that I put about five cups in, I'm gonna go for about two and a half big dessert spoons full of turmeric. Now, this will make a great colour all on its own, but with all dyes, it's really good to have something that's going to fix the dye to the fabric once it's kind of cooked in the colour. Vinegar and salt tend to be the ones that people use the most, and although there's loads of different variations you can find if you're researching natural dyes online, I think I'm gonna use a bit of both today just to make sure the colour really sticks around. So I think I'll start off with some vinegar. Just pop that in there. I'm gonna do about, let's see, maybe three of these spoons, these nice big tablespoons Ooh, of vinegar. <laughs> One. Two. And three. And then maybe I'll do the same with salt as well. That should make, whoops, a really nice strong color. There. And do three of salt as well. One, two, three. Got a nice little stir around. Now I'm going to heat this up on the stove. I'm going to put my fabric that I've got really damp in once it's dyed boiling a little bit. Off we go. Here I am in my kitchen and I've got the pot of dye on to cook on the hob and I'm putting some rubber gloves on because this could get messy. There it is, all finished. Cooling away on the hob. Once it's cooled down a bit, I'm going to lift it out, rinse it out in the sink, and then put it for a quick spin in the washing machine without any detergent. So I'm rinsing it out with cold water now. And you can see how a lot of the color is coming out. That's because the dye is disappearing down the drain. It's taking a lot of the color with it.
here it is out of the wash and look there's a bit of sunshine we can hang it out to dry All right, so woo, we've washed our fabric, we've dyed it, and now it's hung out somewhere to dry. While we're waiting on that to happen, you could get busy making your stencil and your stamps to use on your banner. So for the stencil, for the lettering, I'm going to use two pieces of paper. Probably gonna stick them together like that because that's about the size of the surface area that I want my letters to be on my piece of fabric and I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw some letters on my paper, the right way round, so I'll be able to read them. I'm going to draw some letters on my piece of paper and I'm going to carefully cut them out with a pair of scissors or a craft knife if you've got one of those. I think it's quite a good idea to make the whole stencil in one go because then you can really see where it's gonna land on the fabric and move it all around together. I'm gonna to be writing the word hope today. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick these two pieces together and I'm gonna go for H-O-P-E. It'll be a bit of a job to read, but I think it'll get the message across. So I'm gonna draw those letters on and then I'm gonna carefully cut them out with my pair of scissors or my craft knife so that they are a hole in the piece of paper. Now we need that hole to be those interesting letter shapes because we're gonna carefully sponge the paint through them onto the piece of fabric. I'll show you that in a minute. Don't worry when you're making these if some of the centers of your letters, like the O and the E, don't worry if they disappear. It's still gonna be readable, so it's okay. When you are doing lettering, and you can afford to because bits are gonna get cut away and you're only doing a stencil, it can be quite a good idea to draw boxes where your lettering is going to go. This means that when you make your letters, they end up roughly the same size. And it's quite easy to draw a box, the same as the last box. It can be a bit hard to do that with letters when you're trying to focus on making them also look really good. So here I am drawing some boxes on two pieces of paper that I've stuck together to make my stencil. I know that my lettering is going to say hope, and so I just need the four boxes. If you were gonna do more letters, you'd wanna draw more. So I'm gonna use my boxes to full effect. And the great thing about this is, because I'm cutting all of this away and you're not actually gonna see the pen in the print, I can get it wrong as many times as I like. Say I did my O too small, doesn't matter, I could just draw it bigger again. Like that, round that off a bit. I want that to come down here a bit more. I think I'll leave the center because I know that I'm not gonna cut that out very well anyway. It will disappear. And then finally, my E. There we go, that is ready to cut out. You can give your fabric an iron to make it lovely and flat. So now I'm ready to do my stenciling onto fabric. I'm gonna position my stencil right about where I want it to go. Let's see, this is the important part and I don't wanna get that wrong. That looks about in the middle for me and I'm gonna tape it down just to make sure it doesn't shuffle around as I'm sponging the paint through. I've also put some paper up inside the fabric because I don't want it going through and printing on 
to the other side. Okay. This keeps it nice and secure and it also means that if I go over it at all, it's not the end of the world. I'll just simply be printing onto the masking tape. Mine's green, yours might be some different colours, but it all does the same stuff. It blocks the paint. Now you can see that there's an opportunity for these to lift up and move around. So we don't want to get paint underneath. So what I'm going to do when I use mine is I'm going to be really careful. I've got a sponge here, more cloth. I'm going to be really careful about actually pressing it onto something else to take a bit of the paint off and just carefully only going up and down. I'm absolutely not going to rub it around. I'm going to hold each bit and just sponge away. And I might need to keep going back to get some more. But that's all right. And you can see here, if I lift that up, it's going to leave a really crisp edge. It might start to curl. You've just got to hold it down and perhaps just work on one little bit at a time. All right. So the other thing we're gonna do is make the stamps that we're going to decorate the top and the bottom of our banner with using these little tiny potatoes that I've got here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chop them in half. I'm going to draw on the flat area a nice little design. And I'm going to remember that if it is anything that's going to be back to front when I print it, you have to do it in reverse. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to cut some fun shapes, maybe like some dots and some stars and some half moons. I'm going to cut those shapes out of my potatoes and I'm going to leave them out in the sunshine to dry a little bit so that they're really good for stamping. While we're waiting for the fabric to dry, we can make the stamps. So I've got the potatoes, a pen and a knife. Got to be careful with this. First of all, I'm going to chop them in half. And I'll see what shapes I've got then. Maybe something interesting. Some of these might do some cool dots. So perhaps I'll save that one. And for the rest of them, I'm going to want to cut some interesting shapes into these and some fun surfaces so that when I'm printing, they'll make a really fantastic stamp for me to work with. I think I'll draw on some designs with the pen, just really making a bit of an indentation for where I want it to be. And then I'm going to use the knife to carefully cut it away. I don't necessarily have to use the pen, I could just go straight in with the knife. Making sure that it's always going away from my body. I'm cutting away from myself getting some of those designs done. So there I've got a little cross and I'll just chisel that out. And the great things about using these potatoes is if anything goes wrong it's not the end of the world it's just a potato. That looks pretty good I like that. A nice cross or it could be a kiss that'd be very cute just make sure I've cut enough away so that it's not going to start coming into the design there's one for this one I think I'll do a little half shape so I'll cut down a little bit and then take a bit away like that maybe a bit more that's gonna make quite a fun half moon there so I've got a dot, I've got a cross, and I've got a half moon. And now, I think I might try and do a 
triangle. Whoops. So I'm going to cut into it a little. I won't need to draw this one. And I can just score it away. Making sure to never be cutting towards my fingers. There we go. That'll make a cool little triangle. And then finally, I might try and do somewhere I just cut into the potato a little to perhaps do some fun ridges to print with. If I'm always holding the end of the potato that's got, there we go, that's furthest away from the knife. That'd be quite good, I like that. Brilliant. So I've got four stamps to play with there. I think that's going to be enough to maybe make some patterns. Oh, I've got five stamps. Cool. Leaving these to dry out in the sunshine on the windowsill. And I've had quite a few seagulls coming in trying to eat them already. See, the seagulls in Margate really, really want these potatoes. Sorry fella, I need these for printing. 24 hours later, I think this is all dry. I can peel them off. Hey, happy with that. Um, I've gone a bit wrong there, and I've gone a bit wrong here. But do you know what? It's all part of the look. All right, all right. So this is all dry now after leaving it overnight. I hope you like my banner. <laughs> I'm very happy with how this is coming out, but I want to put some more decoration lights. So that's what my potatoes that I cut yesterday are for. I've left them in a Tupperware box overnight so they didn't go soft and squidgy. And I'm going to use them now to do some lovely decoration across the top and across the bottom of my banner. Not a pillowcase anymore. I like that. So. I am ready to print the top of my banner with some nice decoration. I've got my paint, my potatoes from yesterday, and a nice brush to work with as well. So making sure these are quite dry, I could always rub these with a bit of tissue paper if I wanted to. I'm going to start by loading these with a bit of the black paint using a paintbrush. I don't want too much, because if it's put too much on and it squidges out everywhere, it's gonna kind of ruin the design. But I want enough to be able to make a bit of an impression on the fabric when I'm doing my printing. If it looks a bit splodgy, that's all right. It's all part of the punk look of our banner. And the other important thing to remember, perhaps, design-wise, is that I'm gonna start in the middle. If I started on the edge, all nice and neat, and I got to this end, I might end up with half a stamp and it'll look kind of off-center. So if I start in the beginning of my design and work my way outwards, you know that everything kind of matches up nice and evenly, or at least it gives you a chance of having a go at making it match. So I think I'm going to begin with a nice big circle and see how that goes. So I might take a bit off of the brush and load that up with some paint. And before it gets too dry, whee, here we go, first one. I'm gonna put it right in the center and give it a really good press. Hey, look at that. I mean, that's so clean and clear. It's almost like we're professionals over here. And we'll start for my second one. So you can see I have to load up my potato with the paint each time. Not too much, not too little. And I'm gonna do my second one there. I could always um, give it a little wiggle when I print to make sure it makes a nice impression on the fabric. And the other thing I could do is move my stamp around a little bit. So that as I'm printing, I mean, it's not so obvious with these ones, but maybe if I turn it the other way, it means that your designs, although they look similar, they're not super identical every time, which makes them look like you've even used even more stamps than you actually have. Okay, so I'm going to do a row of circles and then I might do another row of something else and then I'll try some of my different stamps out at the bottom. I 
done it. I've finished my banner, hope, with some decoration to boot. That's pretty good, huh? I'm pleased with that. And now all I have to do is cut some holes in each end and get myself a stick to go through, tie some string to that stick, and this will be ready to hang in the window or in my bedroom. So, on my trip to the supermarket, I'm gonna have a look for some sticks in this lot over there. In my final act of making a banner, I am going to put a nice crossbar across the top of this. So I'm going to cut a little hole that you can see the amount that the fabric has faded in the sunshine. You can expect to lose a little bit of color on this. So I'm gonna cut a little shape, tiny little slip at the top there to make a hole in my pillowcase. Eee, come on, come apart. There we go, there. And I'm gonna do one on the other side. And now I should be able to thread my garden stick through. to keep my banner nice and straight when it's hanging on the wall or in the window. There we go, superb. And the final thing I need to do to hang it up is to get this piece of cord. You could use a shoelace, you could use some rope from the shed to make a little nice little hanging bit there. So to do that, I'm just going to need a little bit of thread. And I think what I'll do is I'll curve this over to make it look really nice and neat when I'm attaching it to my pole. And then I'm going to get the thread. Maybe I'll start by tying a knot around this. To, and I'll leave a little tail for myself and then I'll double this back and go round and round and round until I feel like it's really secure on there. And then I can tie those two together. And maybe for neatness, I'll pull them back around there as well and tie them at the back. There we go, cut them away. And if I repeat that on the other side, I don't need too much to hang this, just a little bit, maybe a tiny little triangle. I can cut that away. Same again on the other side. Tie this on. And then I'm going to go around and around. to really get that secured in place. All right, oh, I'm so nearly done. Tie them off. That is our banner ready to hang. So how about that? We've learned
learned how to make a banner. One that we can hang up to cheer everybody up and give us a little bit of hope. You've learned how to dye fabric with a natural dye. You've learned how to stamp and stencil. You've even learned how to perhaps chop a bit of tree down. <laughs> well done, everyone. <laughs>